Hello everyone, welcome back. Jeb here. So just a couple of hours ago, we got update on a new stimulus bill. This is the bipartisan stimulus bill that was introduced over the last couple of days. We finally got the wording today, the actual bill that shows what they're proposing. And keep in mind, this still needs to be voted on, right? None of this is approved yet. Um, you know, there are already people on both sides saying not to approve it because they want additional um, things thrown into the bill and what have you. But, you know, my goal with this channel has always been to provide education, to provide insight as to what is going on, things that could affect the housing market. And this stimulus is something that could potentially affect the housing market, good, bad, or indifferent. I want to bring it to you so that you know exactly what to expect over the next couple of you know weeks to months so that you can make an informed decisions if you're looking to buy or sell real estate. So, you know, I'm not going to bring up the second bill, which is the hundred and sixty billion dollar bill. This is the controversial bill that they split from the other bill. Um, that's why there's two separate bills being voted on here because they couldn't agree uh, on a large majority of the second part, which has to deal with state and local governments, as well as liability, which is one of the key components of that second part. But we are going to focus on the primary bill, which is that $748 billion bill. We're going to go over some of the highlights in it. We're going to talk about what is included and what's not included and how that might affect the housing market. So what we're going to do here is we're going to bring that up. So. This is essentially the summary of the bill. What I'm going to do is provide a link in the details below if you want, you know, to to read the entire uh, bill. Uh, but at this point, you know, probably not worth your time since it hasn't been approved, right? This is still just something that they're going to be voted on. The language could be modified uh, a little bit in either direction. So, you know, maybe just look at the highlights now to see what is expected. Uh, because if you're someone that could benefit this from this, then you want to pay attention. So. You know, one of the most important things here is that they're going to be extending um, unemployment benefits for 16 additional weeks with 300 additional, um, the supplemental being 300 additional per week. So this is going to be huge for any of those that are unemployed. Now I realize it's not the 600 that we got with the original CARES Act, uh, but it is what they did the second time around, which is that 300, and this will allow people um, a little bit of relief. It'll help people get off their feet. Right now, we know a lot of governments have, have shut down restaurants, businesses. Um, a lot of people are suffering, so that unemployment is definitely going to, to help out. Um, in addition, there is $300 billion for small businesses, includes a second round of PPP for small businesses, um, you know, for restaurants. And there's also looking like there's going to be additional grants. That EIDL grant that was initially supposed to be 10,000 10, per employee, it ended up being 1,000 per employee. Um, but that looks like that's made its way back into this bill as well. As of right now, no, nothing on stimulus checks. Stimulus checks were not a part of this bill. And, you know, recently while reading this, I, I saw a note that, um, you know, I'm not going to mention which side, but there are people from one side not wanting to to pass the bill um, because there's not stimulus provided as part of the relief package. Um, so there's two parties here, you know, bipartisan. They need to work together to figure this out. Um, you know, one side really wants stimulus. The other side does not want stimulus. Um, so, you know, it's going to be a battle and, and maybe it doesn't make its way into this bill and become something separate later down the road. Now, in videos I've done where I've talked about real estate, we've talked about mortgage forbearance, we've talked about evictions, foreclosures, all of that good stuff. And right now, the federal eviction moratorium expires at the end of December. Now, we know that you know if you have a federally backed loan through Fannie or Freddie, that's been pushed out until January. But the federal one um, that, that most people fall under expires at the end of December. So what they've done here is that they've pushed that out through the end of January which is really only a month, right? An extra 30 days, but they're providing 25 billion for emergency rental assistance. I struggle with this part because if you are, you know, currently in a position where you're going to be evicted, you're, you know, you're um, in this conundrum, if you will, where you don't have income, but you could provide, you know, potentially receive emergency uh, funds that they're talking about here, part of that 25 billion. I don't know how they're gonna get that out quick enough 
so that you can actually, you know, apply that to your situation so that you're not evicted at the end of January unless their plan is to further extend it down the road. So which is which I don't know why they wouldn't just do that as part of this bill. So they're looking to provide additional um, stimulus to renters, but they're only given an additional month um, as part of that moratorium. So I'm not sure how that's actually going to to work if it's actually going to be a benefit. Uh, another thing, mortgage forbearance is not a part of the stimulus bill. As we know, you know the mortgage stimulus or, or the original CARES Act provided people that had a federally backed loan up to 12 months of assistance, and that started in March. Most people took it in March and or April, and you know most people you know haven't used their full 12 months up. I mean, it's impossible to have used that full 12 months up at this point just because it hasn't reached March or April yet. So maybe that becomes part of you know, another bill later down the road, but you would think that they would want to try to put as much stuff on the table at the moment and get it passed so that they don't have to visit this further down the road. But at the same time, they're trying to get, you know, as, as little through that could impact the most amount of people so that they can get both parties to agree. So I understand while they're not stacking this bill with a lot of stuff, but you know, the further you kick the can down the road, the more potential problems you could have from this. So, you know, those are the key benefits. I mean, some of the others here are extensions of student loan forbearance through April. Um, you know, there's money for, for health care relief. There's money for, you know, education. There's money for, you know, child care. There, there's different things in here. Um, you know, I don't really feel like they pertain to what I've been talking about with regards to real estate and um, the impact uh, that you know, evictions and foreclosures and all of these moratoriums might have. So I'm not going to dive into that. I really wanted to focus on the things that I thought could affect real estate. Um, and at the moment, you know, we don't know whether or not this is going to pass. But my guess is we would have an answer within the next couple of days, at least on the 748 billion part, which is the part we touched on here. Um, but as I get more information on this, as I receive. Um, additional info I'll definitely put it out there to you but I wanted to provide that to you so that you know if you're in that position where this could help you out you know hopefully keep your fingers crossed and um, some good news will come soon so I appreciate you taking the time to watch as always I appreciate your support we'll see you again soon have a great day bye bye